So this was the original example scene one, but uh, not unreasonably it was felt that there was potentially a copyright infringement issue here with this uh, default Bryce sphere um, being a little bit too close to uh, certain other spheres seen in science fiction films. So I've swapped my idea for the space station, modelled this in Wings 3D and didn't use any reference image. So uh, it, it, obviously it resembles space stations seen in space films but none in particular hopefully oh, well we'll see I'll just try it and see if it gets past this time so uh, what's notable about this well I made it in Wings 3D uh, used a couple of different components so I've got a metal -y bit and a transparent -y bit these uh, red light sources I used the object here this red Sun assembly and just used the command once I'd loaded it in for example so here's a, a distant light source here and just use the edit command to swap it to a radial light just like that so then it could be used to create uh, one of these surface lights so I'll just delete that that was the way that was set up if I just zoom back on this side view if you want this side view it's a keyboard shortcut 3 I think that's correct I've got the nebula and the nebula effect and a bit of a light source here to provide some additional lighting and I think I've got the sun providing some lighting let's check that out yes the sun's active and I'm using atmospheric color perspective to provide the star glow color which is why the horizon looks like this glowing line and essentially what I wanted to cover in this video as I did in the first video that I uh, produced is that when you render these volumetric materials that create the nebulas it can be quite a time-consuming process now if you've got a scene set up and you know you want this red nebula pattern in the background you could always capture that as a 2d image and then slot that back into place so what I'm gonna do is just show you how to capture that backdrop so I'm gonna get rid of my space station for now and this additional light source and disable the Sun because the the glow of the nebula is provided through the global ambient color so it's a, it's a self illuminating object additionally what we have in this scene is some stars rendering and I'm going to capture those in the backdrop as well before rendering the nebula so I'll just select the foreground nebula I'll show you in the material how to improve the quality of the volumetric material so I'm going to set that up at 75 which will slow down the rendering process so now I have a hit render now and render this out as a still image that that can then be brought in and put behind my space station instead of the volumetrics now this is going to take a few minutes and as it happens for the first video I had already made this so I can cut to the chase here and just explain that what you want to do is go file and use export image and export it in this format and then we can bring it in so I'll just cancel because I've already done that I'll just call that background and we'll go now file revert to saved and revert and get rid of the nebulas from my scene so I'm now left with the light sources the ones on the space station the one off to the right here somewhere and uh, the stars now because I've already captured stars in my backdrop I might uh, be thinking about moving those around a bit but in the meantime we'll concentrate on bringing the backdrop in now the backdrop needs to fit exactly in that location so that's the challenge so I'm going to save the current camera position by hitting a memory blob there switch to the side view keyboard shortcut 3 and then just zoom back a bit and then modify my cameras attribute so select my perspective camera go to the attributes and set it down to the origin and zero all its rotations then I'm going to go to the create shelf and click on this little gold fella here click on an empty square be careful at this stage not to click outside this uh, if you do you have the active window behind the Bryce window which makes it seem like Bryce has crashed but if to get back you uh, you can use alt tab uh, to bring that window back so you need to select where you've saved your backdrop there's my backdrop and I called it background open it and check out of there and then I'm going to position this again at zero like the camera and then move it along the z-axis so it's in front of the camera and go and attributes and I'm gonna link that to my perspective camera like so when so that when I re 
store my camera position it, the backdrop is right in front of the camera now at the moment if I give this a quick render you can't see it and that's because of the way that the materials have been set up by selecting the little gold fella it has loaded it in at the correct aspect ratio which means that it is going to fit into this frame nicely but I need to modify the material now because although it's managed to put as a blob in ambient it's put its output in diffuse which is a bit of a strange choice it's put the picture in ambient and not given as an ambient output so if we correct that now you can see this is a solid shape so if, if we do that now it's it's lit up but it's it's solid so if I put it this behind the space station that's going to solve one issue but it's going to cover the sky up behind it too so we'll just go through this in stages I need to move this back away from the camera but bear in mind now if we switch the side view and see the wireframe this is in a bit of a funny orientation so I need to move it that way if I go into the camera view keyboard shortcut one and then select camera space that will now give me if I can find the right control and it's Z in this case I can now slide that back and it still remains centered on my view which is handy and my aim is as you can see to get it behind the space station so now I enlarge this so that it just exceeds the edges of the frame and we've got that back in play and I now have a choice I could, I could render it like this but I've also got the choice of adding it on to the background so if I go back to the material for this material and then go into the material options I could make it additive and at that point it's not casting any shadows so there'll be no weird shadows cast by this backdrop over any objects in my scene and I also get the existing stars to come through now because the stars were in the same position when I captured it they might end up aligned up one over the other or in this case they're slightly out of registration because the frame of my background image is slightly larger than the frame of my rendered image but if I didn't want them to line up in that obvious way and I'd end up with twice as many stars potentially what I can do is go into sky and fog go into the sky lab go to sun and moon and move the celestial sphere around a bit like so and then I'll have more stars and they won't be lined up with one another and that will give me my fairly efficiently rendering image for this so because it's no longer volumetric material it should render quite quickly uh, as, as it happens you know because I don't have many uh, light sources in this because it's a space scene other than the lights on the object and any you might try to create the illusion are, are coming from the nebula you generally speaking only have one really an intense light source if, if we're close to a sun for example so it gives a, a fairly stark rendering environment hence the introduction of other glowing things to uh, to provide more interesting lighting opportunities so there you go that's the way of capturing a background image and then reapplying it in your scene to uh, to save yourself render time or to layer effects up as you could quite easily using the additive process create several different 2d faces and just stack them one behind the other and build them up bit by bit and uh, if you if you render at high resolution you you can also make them larger than your existing render frame and then move them around relative to one another to create different effects uh, as you will find that the 2D faces that Horo has prepared for the object library are rendered at a pretty high resolution that allows you uh, a good deal of flexibility in the way you construct your scenes. So there you go, that is the end of the first video. So I hope you found that interesting and useful and that you'll be ready to tackle the second video. Cheers now.